And he's been down as probably as low as you can be, and he's going as high as he can be. He's not now up for a doctorate degree, which is amazing. Ain't that unbelievable? Give him a hand. <laughs> Our speaker today is from Tallahassee. We went to Jackson, originally from Jacksonville, moved to Tallahassee, went to North Florida Christian there in Tallahassee, and then went on the journey that he's continuing on right now. Everybody, please give it up for Kalen Norris. Who was there last time I came? Okay, all right, so that's the majority of y'all and a few, few new guys. So essentially, last time, man, I made a bold statement. I told y'all, I told y'all boys that I was gonna get into a PhD program after I didn't get in the previous year. And so I'm here to say, when I got into the program, I'm moving to Buffalo, New York, to Dang. attend Dang. to <laughs> the University That's at Buffalo. This upcoming cool. fall, August 27th, school start, and, and my time is coming up short here in about us. I'm about to move next week, so I just want to say thank you to Coach for giving me this opportunity to come address y'all one last time before I get on up out this thing. And I just got this. I just I was thinking these last few days, like man, what do I really want to say? Like, what is it? Like, what's the true essence of the message that I want to get up here and share with y'all? Because I feel like I just got a lot to say. I think that's uh, you know, I think about this, me getting into the PhD program, like just so we on the same page. They had 100 applications for two spots, and I got one of the spots. Mm. This is my thing about this is like, man, this like this part of my greatest achievement in life. But then when you think about all your wins in life, you also got to think about losses. And then Booker T. Washington, he was like, you know, you can't, you, you should not judge success by the position that one attains, like, but by the obstacle one one have to overcome to get there. And so for those who have never heard me, uh, had heard my story, so essentially I graduated high school in 2006, 27 best linebacker in the country, didn't take care of business academically, went to JUCO, uh, you know, I got messed up, uh, got arrested the night before my 18th birthday, got put on probation. From there, I was out there in Texas playing JUCO two years, getting ready to transfer to my D1 school. I was going to Illinois State, came home on spring break, violated my probation, went to prison for two years. Hanging out with somebody who I considered to be my friend, I ended up getting falsely accused of sexual battery. Nine months, I had to drop all my classes. I'm home confined, moved back in with my mama. I got two clunky leg monitors on each of my leg, having to sit and charge my leg up to, next to the wall for three hours every night. And if it, and if it went dead, I was taking me, I was going back to jail, violating my fifty thousand dollar bond. Overcame that situation, and then I fit, ended up graduating UCL first generation. Came here to Valdosta State, got my master's degree, and for the last <laughs> two years, man, I've just been on the grind, working to get this, uh, get into this PhD program. So, and this where we at. So I think. What I had to overcome to get here is just a, it's a remarkable testament to what having willpower in your life is. And so I got to ask, man, what's at this point, moving forward, 2018, man, what's the goal, man? It's bag season. Bag season. <laughs> so now how you get to the bag? After I finish my PhD, I'm, I'm going to have a job as a professor making no less than $150,000. Sweet. Secure that bag. So I had to go back, go back to the basics and start and start uh, realizing like, hey man, it's cracks in your foundation and until you can address those gaps that you missed when you was when you was coming up through school and you were scared and you were scared to learn math because I feel like a lot of us in this room, we scared of math. We we say we suck it, we say we suck at a subject of like how many of y'all feel like you suck at you suck at writing or you suck at math or so it's a subject that you just suck at. So essentially what I'm what I'm I asked y'all to raise your hand because it's not that you suck at it, it's that you haven't started Developing a plan to start developing those skills because that's all it's going to take. Once you, once you identify the gap, then that's where the room for growth lies in because you can identify like, hey man, like, hey man, my math sucks. Or, I suck at probabilities. I suck at uh, rationalizing a fraction or whatever, you know, whatever it is or whatever it might be. My grandma used to suck. So what I'm saying is you identify the gaps and figure out how you can improve because at this point you invest your time, you invest your time, your resources, your mental energy, your physical energy in this thing that we call football and this thing that we call life. And what I need you to understand is like for you to get the, the biggest return on your investment, you got to identify the gaps. Where can you make improvements at? Because that's what it's going to take for you to become the best man possible, for you to become the best teammate possible. Because at, at this point it's what? Bag season, right? Bag season. So if it's bag season, that means the only way that we get to that level is identifying the gaps early on in this process because, hey, 
we got a long road ahead of us, man. 2000, 2018, man, y'all know where y'all started at and you know where y'all trying to finish it. And the only way that you get there and have a successful and have a successful attainment of that goal that y'all are trying to reach is start, start from the foundation, baby. Figure out where your gaps at. Like a, a gap could be something so small, but remember that we're talking about we're talking about being great. And to achieve greatness, you gotta do a lot of the small things. You gotta do a lot of the small things well. Like that's all that's all achieving greatness is gonna take is for you to concentrate on improving them little small areas of your life that's gonna that's gonna have the most gains and the return on your investment moving forward. So when you focus, so when you know that you got deficiencies and you got some gaps that's preventing your performance or attaining that goal, then you can have functional ambition. Being functionally ambitious ensures that you achieve, you achieve success in your current station where you're currently at right now in your life. So like I said, everybody got ambition, but when you think of something that's functional, functional means it's, it, it has a use, it has a practical use regardless of design, it's, you, it's use is practical. Then you think about ambition, you think about ambition is your drive, your desire to achieve a goal. So when you combine the two, you got a functional ambition. So that is basically somebody who designs a process within their life to make sure that they achieve success. So what I'm asking y'all to do is focus on it, identify the gaps in your performance right now that you currently have to then become functionally ambitious. So that way, every day we're working towards becoming the best man, the best teammate, the best individual possible because we functionally ambitious. I can't focus on the speaker and focus on uh, the GRE at the same time. So I became functionally ambitious. I told y'all I was working at Longhorn making $12 an hour with the master's degree. So that was, so that was my grind at night. I wake up in the morning, go to the gym, go to the library and study all day long. You know, I get off work, I get off, leave the library, go to work, go, go to work, get off work, wake up the next morning, do it all over again. I did that eight months straight. You no, know, December 21st, 2017, man, my life changed. I went to, I took that GRE, I walked out, I got a 312. 312, I told you I got the 139 on the first time I took it, 12 percentile, I ended up increasing my score to 155, which is 59 percentile. My, my GRE score went up 24 points. The average person, the average person usually goes up five to 20, between five and 10 points, I went up 24. So I called my mentors on the phone, they tell me like, man, hey, you need to stop taking, just stop taking the test. Stop taking a test, you just, you just spent over $1,000 on taking this test, your score, might, your score is not going to go up more than what it is. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, man, I remember that quote, it said, the harder you work, the harder it is to surrender. I just took the GRE four times, but guess what, you weren't with me when I was in, when I was putting in this work in the library, making $12 an hour, having $15 dollars in my bank account to eat every month. You weren't with me, you weren't with me, brought it, and guess what, I got to take it again, because I put in the work. So I can stand here in front of y'all and tell y'all that guess what, man, I'm out here eating. I'm out here eating every day of my life. And I want y'all to get that to understand. You leave your food on the table every time you go to class and you get anything under a beat. Anytime that you go to you, you skip class. Anytime you, you stop doing the extra weight, the extra reps in the weight room. Anytime you give up before you before you don't run across the line. Listen, you leave your food on the table, because guess what? For, for, the, for, the, for those of you who, who have not been doing what you're supposed to do in the classroom, it's somebody that's at home, he waiting on you to slip up. He's waiting, he hoping that you continue to keep leaving your food on the table. Because guess what? If you, if you mess around and you fail your class, then you academically and everything, you off the table. Guess what? Your spot opens up and he gets, and he gets another opportunity to come time. So think about it. So I want y'all to think about that when y'all spending too much time playing 2K or saying, hey, I'm gonna put this assignment off, I'm not gonna do it because it's somebody that's hoping that you slip up. Stop leaving food on the table. It's too important. It's too important for your future. I need you to take full advantage of every opportunity that you got. We're not missing no class. We're not missing no assignments. We're in the film room because guess what is what? It's bag season, baby. Bag season. And the only way that we get to the bag is we can't leave no food on the table. They over there in North Alabama, they working. Every other team in this conference, they working. Everybody got the same, everybody got the same goal, but everybody don't have the same grind. We ain't leaving no food on the table. Let's go get it. Go get it. But guess what? Just because you got the vision and you've been grinding, I'm telling you, man, hey, it get hard sometimes. It get hard sometimes. Like I had a I just really feel like, man, it's, it's really it's beauty in the struggle. Like I'm sitting there telling y'all, man, I got to the PhD program. I'm about to move to Buffalo, New York. I just secured a bag, $150,000. Listen, I, my kids will never know what a student loan is. I'm about to be paid. But you got to have faith in the process, man, because I feel like everything that we go through in life is for a reason. So I, you know, so I wanted to show y'all these three pictures, man. The picture on the left, that's that's DOC, Department of Corrections, 20 months. Like I did that, and the picture on the middle. That's why you gotta have faith, man, because God is real. God is real. I'm telling you, man, I was I was sitting, I was on my deathbed one time. Back in 2013, after I didn't got out of prison, after I, you know, they finished the sexual battery stuff, and, and I'm just like, I, I'm living my life. I'm like, man, I'm finally done. I got everything in my past. I'm just trying to move forward in my life. Next thing I know, I wake up one day, I'm in, I'm hallucinating, I'm seeing stuff, I'm seeing people walk through the walls, I go to the hospital, and they're like, oh man, you got lethal never the moment. Both my kidneys stopped working, my liver shut down. 
I had to get five blood transfusions. I'm on the verge of dying. And I'm and I'm in and I'm in I'm in the hospital bed three or four days after I started to regain my mind. And I'm like, God, like why are you doing this to me? Like why you like, why are you testing me like this, man? Like I done did too too much. I done overcame so much. Like I'm in school, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm trying to be a good son, I'm trying to be a good citizen. And why you keep testing me like this? And then I started crying, because I'm like, man, like, why? And then he told me, he was like, man, just have faith. So I, I said, God, I said, man, listen, just, I promise you, man, you get me through this, I promise you, I'm going to use my story, I'm going to use my testimony to get in front of young men who look, who look just like you, that come to see the background, who have the same the dreams and the same goals that you once had, and you're going to be able to get in front of them and tell them, man, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep fighting, keep have faith in the process. And the process, I'm telling you, the process is, is a reward process. The grind, the everyday drudgery of going through it, and like, man, I really don't feel like going through it, I really don't feel like working, I really don't feel like doing it, but guess what? You don't get to do it, you, you don't got to do it, you get to do it. It's, it's only focusing on all high school athletes make it to this level, and guess what? You made it. You got your seat at the table. You got your seat at the table, and guess what? So now it's time to get to that next, now it's time to go to that next level. We ain't leaving no food on the table, man. We working for it. We gonna trust the process. Have faith in the process, baby. And I just wanna say, man, it's been a pleasure and an honor to stand here in front of y'all and to be able to share and pour into y'all, man. And for those of you who I have developed a relationship with, it's been an honor, it's been my pleasure, man. I love each and every single one of y'all. I just really feel like it's bag season, baby. Like, it's bag season. I, it, I feel like it's, it's greatness in this room. The energy be flowing through me. Like, I just feel the spirit every time I come and I stand up here in front of y'all and get to talking. So I just really feel like, man, it's time to do great things. It's time to do great things, but a, te- a, a chain is only as strong as the weakest link. So I need y'all to, to pull into each other, push each other, and get to that next level. Like, let's make sure we hold each other accountable for everything that we do in life, whether it be on, this, whether it be on the football field, whether it be in the classroom, or just in life in general, because... But I, I just need y'all to continue to pour into each other, man, because that is very important as y'all moving forward in this process because the sacrifices, the sacrifices that you have to make are very real. They say, they say, he who, they say he who would attain highly must sacrifice greatly. He who would attain highly must sacrifice greatly, man. I'm going to leave y'all with that. I'm going to leave y'all with that quote. I mean, like I said, it's been my, it's been my pleasure. If y'all want to follow me on the, on the gram or hit, take my phone number if you need to talk to me. But I'm, I'm always right here. I'm only one phone call away, man. That's it. That's it, fellas. Man, I don't need to say much. I tell you what, that, that probably I need to just throw this away because what he said today trumps everything I was gonna say. All right, but I can tell you a few things. What I was just to go along those same deals, okay? This is our phase three coming up. Phase three, all camp. All right.